What's going on rocket powered sound designers? Virtual Riot, Lumberjack, and 12th Planet all came together to create an insane song and today we're going to be recreating the main metallic lead and it sounds like this. And that's it. <laughs> pretty cool sound. I know it's played pretty often through the drop, so that's why I decided to make it. Also, guys, if you think this is a cool sound and you think it's pretty accurate, all you have to do is drop a like on this video. Just press that like button. That's all you have to do, and it supports me. And if you're new here, click that subscribe button because if that's on you if you're not subscribed because we got serum tutorials coming out all the time. And if you're subscribed, you are immediately part of the Rocket Powered Sound Designers. RPS Nation, you know, we're on that next breed of sound design. Anyways, guys, if you haven't checked out the site already, we have a ton of new changes. We have a blog now, all awesome stuff. So check that out if you have a chance, if you want to, because, you know, it's just more free information, just sending it out like that to you guys to learn from. Anyways, let's start it off pretty simple. Now, if we take a listen to the original track, uh, we're going to immediately hear, I can't play it because, you know, I'm going to get flagged for copyright. But anyways, we're going to hear there is pretty intense sub. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be turning on our sub oscillator. And it's going to be working as the sub. <laughs> pretty straightforward. Now we're going to be selecting direct out. And what direct out is, if you're not already aware, is it's going to bypass all the effects and filters. So essentially, it's just going to be going straight out and <laughs> we're going to be modulating it with LFO1. Now LFO1 is going to be our pretty basic shape here. It's uh, going to really just shape the entire sound. So make it good, right? So this is what my LFO1 is going to look like. A little something like that. And, you know, if you guys have any good headphones on, you can hear the sub is working in the background. Now, okay, we're done with the sub. We're going to move into oscillator A. Oscillator A dropped that level all the way down to zero. And we're going to modulate the level up as well. So, once again, guys, like I'm saying, we're creating like a plucky sound with LFO number one here. And we're going to put this on triggers. So, as soon as we start, as soon as, uh, as soon as we press a note, it's going to start right here and then repeat itself over and over, just cycling through. And we're going to put this right at 1 16th. Okay, pretty cool. So now we are going to turn on our FM. But before we turn on our FM, what's the best waveform to run frequency modulation? Let's see, do you guys know? Yes, that's right, a sine waveform. Perfect, nice job. Okay, so a sine waveform is the ultimate waveform for running frequency modulation because it is so simple and smooth. We have so much room, we have so much room uh, for the frequencies to be intercepted from uh, on oscillator B and then actually be able to use a high amount of FM without it sounding like absolute garbage. So. Speaking of using FM, <laughs> turn up our FM to about 84%, and that's going to lead us to oscillator B. Make sure oscillator B's level is dropped all the way down to zero. Uh, we do not want any sound escaping because, you know, oscillator A is the host for the FM and it's receiving the signal from oscillator B, so there's not, it doesn't really make sense for oscillator B to be outputting any sound. Anyways, we're going to go to basic shapes, and we're actually going to be using a sine waveform as well for oscillator B. Um, now, a quick little tip here, we can do a little bit of modulation on the FM just to give it a little bit more movement. <laughs> not the coolest sound, and we're not even making really that classic metallic sound. So what we're gonna be doing to fix that is turn up the octave three. Now, when we have the octave up three, you know, we have three more cycles within, this one, within a single cycle of oscillator A, so. <laughs> classic. FM sound right here. Now, the problem with this is it sounds almost too sharp. Like, take a listen one more. There's that really harsh high end, and what we're going to be doing to fix that, we're going to turn on our PWM, or pulse width modulation. And what that's going to do is it's just going to scrunch that waveform all the way over in the left hand corner, and we're going to be modulating it with LFO1 
all the way back to zero. Now, just take a listen and watch the, uh, the wavetable. Before. See how much more character the shape or the, the sound now has? Uh, it's perfect. Exactly what we want. Now, that's going to take us straight into the effects panel. And um, before I start getting all crazy here, we want to turn on our multi band compressor. Because what's the multi band going to do? The multi band is going to even out each and every one of the bands. So we got the high band, the, mid, the mids, and the lows. So. Okay. Turn that off. Turn that on. Very slight. And it's also um, taking away a little bit of the attack on this pluck. It's making it give it a little bit more of a pop. All right, Shane. Calm down there. <laughs> uh, but one thing that you're, you're, you're going to realize is we're starting to miss out on some of the lower end frequencies in the sound. So what we're going to be doing to fix that is, although we do have the sub running, um, it's not really filling in for the lower end in the metallic region, if you know what I'm saying. So we're going to turn on our phaser and we're going to almost emulate a guitar amp. Drop the rate down to zero hertz and the depth down to zero percent and the frequency down to 20 hertz. Immediately it sounds like it's processing through a, gra uh, a guitar amp and it sounds pretty cool. Um, you know, it just adds in those lower frequencies that we need to make the sound sound cool. Next, EQ, 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 EQ. We're gonna drop this straight to the cutting out frequencies shape. Okay, um, I don't, so guys, by the way, stay tuned for the next couple videos because I have some really crazy ass techniques and serum that you guys have never ever even heard of before you've never even seen okay uh so stay tuned for that because guys this is literally next level stuff okay next level stuff oops wrong one <laughs> so we're going to be modulating the frequency here all the way from 22 hertz all the way up to the max of 20,000 hertz i know crazy we're going to turn down the q factor a little bit so without the EQ, with it, we really just kind of smooth it out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Cut out that high end. Um, perfect. Now, filter. Filter is going to be rocking a band reject. So that's going to be found in the miscellaneous section. And the band reject filter, um, I, I'll show you on the filter what it looks like right now. So you can see exactly what we're doing. Uh, turn on the band reject and Essentially what we're going to be doing is we got the width turned up all the way So we're cutting out a big portion of the the high end at first and then we're going to be modulating the cutoff um, So we're moving that big width down And just kind of Modulating the width as well and what that's going to do is it's going to create a very interesting to say the least sound it's going to shape it to essentially <laughs> what it sounds like in the original track which is obviously what i was going for so we're going to start off with the cutoff at around 901 hertz turn up the resonance and then the width is going to go all the way up to 100 percent we're going to modulate that width down to about 23 without the filter with the filter it just kind of shapes it a little bit more to the original track. Finally, hyper dimension, hyper dimension. Can't go wrong. Uh, hyper is going to go down to about 5% dimension. You know what? Just so you guys can see what I mean, we're going to turn up the size all the way to 100%. Same with the mix. And this is what we get. Absolute utter garbage. So we're going to drop the size to about 3% so we don't get that utter garbage and there we go we get that classic metallic sound that they used in their original track so guys you know who i am i'm shane gregoire 
and you know we're working on a lot of products you know i've been so busy lately working on stuff for you guys um we have i'm not going to name it yet because i don't even want you guys to get a hint of what we're working on but it's a serum pack and then we have a sample pack and once you guys hear this stuff you are going to be blown away and if you guys visit the site in the next coming month you're going to see like two new products on there that you have never even seen anything like on the internet uh i'm not even like trying to overhype it or exaggerate it like that like that's straight up you're not going to see anything in it like this product we seriously try and make serum products that are unlike any other company because i know a lot of companies are pretty garbage I'm not going to list any names here but you guys know who i'm talking about not cymatics Cymatics is chill. Um, but without further ado, I am Shane from Rocket Powered Sound, and I will catch you guys in the next video.